Hey there everybody, I'm Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw a Lesson and I'm going to go ahead and just jump into it. This is a lesson on how to draw a realistic eye. Um, I'm going in uh, with my black Prismacolor to make the uh, upper eyelid and uh, let me just say in general that if you want to draw a realistic eye or realistic anything, you really owe it to yourself to draw from life or uh, at least uh, look at photo reference, uh, which is what I did um, for uh, preparation on this video. So um, the, the eye shape, fortunately, is very much the way we imagine it. You know, this sort of, I don't know, almost like seed shape, uh, at least right along the edge uh, of the eye itself. Of course, everyone knows that there's this sort of uh, section here on the inside of each eye um, that comes out and um, you know different eyes have different sizes and shapes of this area over here so um, you know the reference that I looked at gave me this kind of a, a shape but you may look at something different or look at your own eye and find that it's shaped differently uh, in any case there seems to be maybe one or two little sections if you want to get hyper detailed over here in this area um, now that I've got that section done, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get to the eye itself. And uh, this again, it's you know more or less a perfect circle. So um, if you don't trust your own circle drawing skills, you may want to trace around a quarter or something. Who knows uh, to get that perfect shape? You know, I don't think there's anything really all that uh, wrong with uh, getting some help from. Uh, you know, a ruler when you need a straight line, or uh, you know, a cup or something when you need a perfect circle. Anyway, uh, I've kind of got that section in place, and um, for the pupil, uh, I'm thinking that it's about uh, one fourth or one fifth the width of the iris. Again, a perfect circle to whatever degree you're able to do it. And then um, I'm going to put in a sort of a highlight area over here that, you know, maybe is sort of the suggestion of a, uh, a window in the wall that's providing uh, some light there, okay? Now I'm going to jump in and, and do the, uh, the eyelashes. This is a female eye and uh, maybe, uh, maybe someone who's wearing quite a bit of mascara, who knows. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give uh, a nice... Uh, nice thick dark full eyelash area over here um, this kind of thing you know I can't obviously go line by line and tell you how to do it it's um, uh, practice makes perfect I guess uh, but again uh, looking at different reference looking at different eyes you're gonna see all kinds of different ways of, uh, of doing the eyelashes um, and uh, the only thing is that at the bottom you want to create a little bit of a separation between the eyelash area and uh, the actual, you know, flesh of where the, uh, the eyelid meets the eye. This is that line. The second line down here is where the eyelashes are going to uh, come out. And uh, they start quite thin, you know, down in, uh, over here on this section, and as they go along, they get thicker and thicker, um, at least in the reference that I was looking at. And having got that section done, we've kind of got the basic shape in place, and the basic guidelines for the eye itself. Now, um, again, every eye is different, but uh, it's all, uh, most uh, eyes uh, are going to have some kind of a eyelid and uh, this one that I looked at for uh, reference had quite a I guess you'd call a heavy eyelid which means that the line of the eyelid is pretty distant from the line of the eyelash uh, again looking at different thing look at your own eye you may find that that line is a lot closer uh, and in some Asian eyes the, there's almost no line at all uh, of, uh, uh, eyelashes. I'm not, this is not so much a video about drawing the eyebrows, so forgive me, I'm just going to drop in really quickly a suggestion of an eyebrow here without talking about it too much. 
Now I'm going to zoom in right now to what I feel is the absolutely most important part of this lesson and that is the iris and I want you to really see the details of what I do here so pardon me while I zoom in. Now uh, getting a good iris uh, illustration done is the real key to making a super realistic you know almost photorealist looking eye um, and what I'm doing here I'm going to do in real time just this section here sort of roping off or showing these the the, the sections that I'm going to darken up and the sections that I'm going to leave light basically this little area in here is going to stay relatively light uh, and the rest of this stuff is going to get darkened in now I know like people like to a uh, real-time video and people don't like when I time-lapse but uh, seriously this one I could spend a whole half hour just on the iris itself so I'm gonna time-lapse this part but I'll come, ba come back to explain a little about the choices I made All right, so uh, you can see where the the key to getting a nice uh, shiny looking eye is uh, getting this nice window shaped uh, highlight. Although it doesn't have to be window shaped; it can be sort of circular or any number of shapes. But make sure that you keep it nice and white, and that the, you darken the area near the highlight, and that helps it pop and makes the whole thing look uh, shinier. And you saw that I spent uh, a fair amount of time adjusting. Uh, the different shades here. There's a there's a band area here near the pupil that's uh, um, a certain thickness. There's a whitish area down here, and then uh, again, in certain types of eyes, every eye is different. Uh, you get the very darkest band uh, of color right around the very edge. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and very quickly darken this uh, area in of the eyelashes. Again, this is uh, maybe a, a female eye, someone who's wearing quite a bit of mascara. And uh, with that, we're starting to come into the home stretch on this video. And again, to keep things uh, a reasonable length, I'm going to have to do some of this in time lapse. But um, Hopefully it, it won't be anything that you couldn't follow along with. Basically I'm going to be adding shading uh, uh, to make the whole thing look a little more 3D. And, and again I'll come back to explain a little bit about the choices I made. Okay, well, this is uh, pretty much it then. We uh, have put in all of the shading, and, uh, you know, as you can see, uh, with anything that's, you know, kind of going for photorealism here, you just need to take your time. You know, you just got to be patient and keep working at it and keep slowly building it up. Um, and uh, that's why I just, I pretty much had to uh, time lapse through a lot of the stuff on this video. That's, uh, those are the re requirements of doing something truly realistic and uh, in many ways you know if this is the kind of art style that you want to do the most important thing that you need to learn is patience um, you can draw almost anything so long as you're willing to commit the time to it so um, that's pretty much it for this video I hope you found it useful and if you want to see me do more um, realistic stuff like this by all means let me know I'd be happy uh, to do a whole series of videos like this. This is, of course, uh, what I was trained to do in my youth. Uh, and um, if you are able to draw like this, I think it does help you to draw in any other style uh, even better, um, or to you know just bring something extra to it, whether it's the manga style or even just a cartoony style. If you know how to draw this way, um, you're going to be able to draw in any style uh, at a higher level safe to say. Well, let's go ahead and put the pencil down. Um, I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Um, I won't show the cover of the book, but I do want to thank people for uh, buying my uh, Mickey Falls uh, series or any of my books. I really do appreciate your support. Uh, it means so much and it does allow me to keep doing these videos. Uh, and uh, 
Thanks for watching. I'll go ahead and end this one.